A sick man in sadness makes his will. A word ill urged to one who is so ill. In sadness, cuz, I do love a woman. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. Mm, a right fair markman. And she's fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, as soon as tit. Well, in that hit you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, oh. and in strong proof of chastity, well armed from love's weak childish bow, she lives uncharmed. Oh, she is rich in beauty, only poor. Then when she dies with beauty, dies her store. Then she has sworn that she will still live chaste? Oh, she hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh! Teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other beauties. <laughs> Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve as but a note, where I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell, my cuz. Thou cannot teach me how to forget. I'll pay that doctrine, or else die in debt. But Montague is bound as well as I in penalty alike. And tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we <laughs> to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both. It is a shame you've been at odds for so long. <clears throat> now, my lord, what say you to my suit? By saying what I've said before. My child is yet a stranger in this world. She hath not seen the change of sixteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may find her right to be a bride. Younger than she, or happy mother's maid. And too soon marred are those so early made. Earth hath swallowed all my hopes. But she's the hopeful lady of my birth. But woo her, gentle Paris. Win her heart. This night, I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest such as I love. Come, go with me. Ah, Sirrah, go trudge about fair Verona and find out those persons' names written there, and to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Find those persons whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard and the tailor with his last, the fisher with his paints and the painter with his nets. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are written here and can never even find the names that the writing person here hath writ. <laughs> I must to the learned. In good time. Hot man, one fire burns out another's burning, one pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy and be helped by backward turning. One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to the eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plantation leaf is excellent for that. For what, I pray thee? Uh, for your broken shed. Why, Romeo, art thou mad? <laughs> Not mad, but bound, more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped, tormented. Good <laughs> evening, good fellow. Uh, good evening, sir. I pray, can you read? I, my own fortune and my misery. Perhaps you learned it without book. I pray, can you read anything you see? Hi, if I know the letters and the language. He say honestly. Rest you, Mary. Stay, fellow, I can read. <laughs> Signor Martino and his wife and daughters, Mercutio ah. and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet and his wife and daughters, my Fair niece Rosaline <laughs> and Lydia, Signor Valentino, 
and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio and and the lively Helena. Hubba hubba. A fair assembly. The whither should they come? Up. The whither? To supper? To our house. Whose house? My master's house. Ah, indeed. I should have asked thee that before. Well, now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet. And be you not of the house of Montague, I pray, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest ye merry. At the same ancient feast of Capulet sups the fair Rosaline, whom thou so loves, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. When the devout religion of my eye maintains such faults, and then turns tears to fire, and those who often drown could never die, Transparent heretics, be burnt for liars. One fairer than my love? The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Tut, you saw her fair, none else being by, herself poised with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scales let there be wage your lady's love against some other maid that I shall show you shining at the feast. And she shall scant show well that now shows best. I'll go along with thee. No such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. <laughs> Nurse, where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Now by my maidenhood at twelve-year-old, I bade her come. What lamb? What ladybird? Where's this girl? What? Julia! How now? Who called? Your mother. Uh, madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me, thou to hear our counsel. Thou knows my daughter's of a pretty age. Oh, faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. She's not sixteen. Ah, only sixteen of my teeth, and yet to my teen be it spoken, I have but six. <laughs> She's not sixteen. How long is it now to Lamb's Tower? A fortnight and odd days. Oh, even a rod of all the days in the year. Come Lammas Eve at night, shall she be sixteen? <laughs> Oh, Susan and she were of an age. <sighs> God rest all Christian souls. Well, Susan is with God. Is with God. She was too good for me. But as I said, on my Miss Eve at night shall she be sixteen. Oh, Mary, I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake now, thirteen years. I for then she could stand alone. Oh, nay, by the rood. She could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before she broke her brow. <laughs> and then my husband, oh God be with his soul, he was a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backwards when thou hast more wit. <laughs> wilt thou not, Jewel? And by my holy dame, the pretty wretch left crying and said, oh. To see now how a jest shall come about. <laughs> I never should forget it. Yay, quoth <clears throat> What? Oh. Uh, yeah, you fell on your face again. <laughs> yea, yeah, yea, quoth he, falsed upon thy face. <laughs> thou wilt false backward when thou comest of age, wilt thou not, Jewel? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I have done God mark thee to his grace. Oh, thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. 
I might see thee married once oh. I have my wish. Mary, that Mary is the very theme I came to talk of. <gasps> Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands her disposition to be married? Oh. Is an honor I dream not of. <laughs> an honor? <laughs> Were I not thine only nurse, I would say thou hast sucked wisdom from thy children. <clears throat> Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. <clears throat> Thus then in brief, the valley of Paris <gasps> seeks you for his love. Oh, a gentleman, young lady. Leave such a man as all the world by. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona summer hath not such a flower. Oh, nay, he's a flower. Indeed, a very flower. <laughs> what say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feet. Read o'er the volume of young Paris' face and find the light writ there with beauty's pen. So shall you share all that he doth possess. By having him, making yourself no less. No less? <laughs> nay, bigger. For women, they're all my men. Oh, speak briefly. Can you like a Paris love? I will look to like if looking like is a mood. But no more deep lined dart mine eye than your consent with strength to make it fly. Man! The guests are come, supper served up, oh. you call what my lady asked for. The nurse cursed in the pantry. <laughs> Follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. Go, oh, girls, seek happy nights to happy days. Come on. Come on. with his shaft to soar with his light feathers, a so bound. Oh, I cannot bound to pitch above a dull woe. Oh, under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink it should you burden love. Too great depression for such a tender thing. Ah. <laughs> is love a tender thing? It is too rough. Hey, too rude. <laughs> too boisterous. And yet, like a board. <laughs> if love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for prickling, and you beat love down. Give me a case for my visitin. A visor for a visor. What care I of hearing the sign of conformities? Here the beat of rouse shall lush on me. Come, knock and enter, and no sooner in but every man betake him to his legs. <sighs> a torch for me. Let wine's light of heart. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair, and I am done. Ah. Touch! Done's the mouse, the constable's own word. If thou art done, we will draw thee from the mire, or, save your reverence, love, which is now stickest up to the ears. Come, we burn daylight. Nay, that's not so. I mean, sir, in delay we waste our lights like lights by day. Take our good meaning, for our judgment sits five times not here once in our fine wits. And we mean well in going to this mass, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? I, I dreamt a dream tonight. A dream? 
And so did I. But yeah, well